Yeah, I redid everything that we did yesterday in a more orderly fashion. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so for instance, the uh, the uh, if you take f of x equals three to the x power, then the inverse function is going to be log base three to the x and that whole pattern, the common log, the natural log. And then the product rule for exponential functions and logarithmic functions and the quotient rule, the power rule, the zero power rule, the power of one rule. And then finding inverses, and this is actually important as an introduction to what we're going to do today. So for this, I have to actually add a page. Because. I need to be able to move this up so it's more visible. There. OK, so here are the steps to finding an inverse function. And before before I show this, I'm just going to do one over here. Um, if we have f of x equals something totally unrelated, like 3x plus 5, then I'm going to go through the steps of finding its inverse. Y equals 3X plus 5. And uh, switch the X and the Y. X equals um, 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 3Y plus 5. And then go through the process of solving for Y. So I would subtract from both both sides of the equation. OK, so that would leave me 3y on the right and x minus 5 on the left. And then to get y by itself, I would divide by 3 and divide by 3 so that I have y equals x minus 5 over 3. And this is what the inverse equals, the inverse function. So the inverse of f of x is x minus 5 of 3. OK, this is just an example, an example of finding the inverse something we did before. Yes, I love doing these. I love things that are just stated number of steps. And so do most people who do math. All right, now we're going to go through the process of finding the inverse of an exponential function. We're going to use the same exact steps. One y equals 5 to the x, 2, switch the x and the y, 3, solve for y. This absolutely stopped mathematicians in their tracks for hundreds of years because nobody knew how to go from here to solve for y. Nobody could do step 3. So, as you know, the logarithm function was found by accident, and now we now we can do step three. Step three is y equals log base five of x. That's the inverse function of f of x equals 5 to the x power, or y equals 5 to the x power. The inverse is log base 5 of x, and that's what we're going to be talking about today over and over and over and over again until it's just cemented in our minds, and you can see how basically easy it is. Because here we have something that's true. 
log base five of uh, log base seven of 49 equals two. That's true. Why? Well, because if you take seven down there and raise it to that power, you get 49. That's the relationship between logarithms and exponents. You can switch back and forth between them as you need to. So it's all a matter of three words, three words, and putting them in the right place. Those three words are base, argument, and exponent. So for a log, the base goes down here by the stem of the. The argument goes in here and the exponent goes out here. So that seven to the two equals 49. This is the base. This is the exponent. And this is the argument of the function. And here it's easier to see that that is the base because this base is holding up the exponent right there. That's how I remembered it when I was a student. Well, it's like the base is holding up the exponent. So that's the base. That's the exponent. And this is just the answer, but it becomes the argument when you put it over here. So we could call it the answer over here, but it has the same letter as argument, which is what we call it when it gets over there. So we might as well just call that argument right now. So I'm going to change it to argument so that there's no difficulty understanding. And it's just a matter of moving those pieces around. If, if face to face, then I would make a whole bunch of little paper words and give them out to people so that they could move the words around. But we're not meeting face to face, so I can't do that. OK. Now, this is exactly what we're going to do. The homework today is in section 9.4, and it's about converting between logarithms and exp logarithmic equations and exponential equations. And that's actually what we're going to do today. So let me save this and then move along to that. Ah, I have to, yes, I have to pull it out of here. Not here, but here and here and here and here. Yeah, keep the old one. Okay. Now, this is the homework. This is, this takes a lot of explanation. But the rest of it doesn't. The rest will make you so bored and that's good because we don't get bored when things stay hard. This will become easy because you're only dealing with three words. Now, originally, I let the base be B and the exponent be E and the argument be A. 
but that could cause some problems, okay? That could really cause some problems, especially if we're dealing with the letter E. So I really, excuse me, I would like to change it, but I don't think I can now. Oh, I, I can. There and here and here and here. And this is what I want to change them to. Not change them a lot. I'm going to make them a different color though. I'm just going to let base stay base because it's such a short word. I'm going to let exponent be E X P. And I'm going to let argument be A R G. That way we won't get mixed up later on because I did this with my uh, other class, my morning class, my 7.30 a.m. class, and it was a little easy to get mixed up. So this way now, an exponential function is base raised to exponent equals argument. And a logarithm is log with the base down here, the exponent here, and the argument here. So it's just a matter of repositioning those words. So what I did up here, I actually worked one out. That was when I was still using B and E and A. Um, but anyway, okay, this what we're supposed to do, what the problem is, is to take this 8 to the 1 3rd power equals 2 and change it into a logarithmic equation. Right now it's an exponential equation because it has an exponent. Okay, well, if I remember that this is the base and this is the exponent, and this is the argument, then all I have to do is change them around Ah, I did that already. Oops. OK. All right, the B goes down here, so eight goes down there. The um, the E all right, goes here, so that means one third goes over there, and the A goes here, so the two will go there. And so indeed you can come over, I, I included the answers, and that's the way it is. This is the base. This is the exponent. No, it isn't. I lied to you. That's not the exponent. I have a cat touching me right now. I want to go to blue. OK, this is the exponent. And this is the argument. So let's change the word base to blue. B. E. So it's just a matter of changing it from over here to over there. So I'm going to bring this down so we can see it. And now we're going to move on and we're going to do this over and over and over again. In number two, we're being asked to watch the video, so they're going to do that. 
and then um, convert to an exponential equation from a logarithmic equation. So what we have to do is look at this and say, hmm, well, you'll have to memorize. Yes, okay. That this is the base. This is the exponent. And this is the argument. Now, all we have to do to convert to an exponential equation is have the base at the bottom, the exponent above and to the right of the base, the equal sign, and then you write the argument here. So we're going to have three here. And we're going to have five here. We're going to have an equal sign, and we're going to have the argument 243 be right here. And indeed, then you check yourself over here. Oh yeah, it's true. Where the base is right there, the exponent is right there and the argument is right there. And the way I remembered this when I was a student was B, E, A, <clears throat> be an angel, which is the kind of thing that your grandmother says to you, you know. But I was young when I was a student, and I was still remembering my mother and grandmother saying that to me. Be an angel. Blech. I didn't want to be an angel. I'm sure I'm you were, sure Barbara. Barbara. I promise you I was not. But I should have been. I regret it now. Okay, got any questions so far? No, nope, no. Nope. We're just changing around our words. So now. We're being asked to convert this exponential equation to a logarithmic equation. So let me write the word log in black right here. Okay, now coming back over here, this is the base. This is the exponent. And this is the argument or the answer. Over here, it's the answer. You know, so you could write answer, yeah, but it's going to change names when you get it to the other side. Because we need to have a base down here. We need to have an exponent over here. And we need to have the argument arg be here. But notice that answer and argument. They start with the same letter A. So that's probably the most important thing is the A. And indeed. Here is the base. Here is the exponent. And here is the answer argument right there. And it should have parentheses around it. If you're going to be picky, and all my math teachers were very, very picky. So, this and this are exactly equivalent. What this does is it says, OK, I know that the base is 10. And I know that the answer over here is 1000, but I don't know what exponent to use. 
That's what the logarithm does. It gives you the exponent you need to use with that to get this as an answer. So it's like saying, okay, I've got 10 to some power, and I know the answer is 1,000, but I don't know what the exponent is. What can I do? Get a logarithm. Put the base down there and the answer there. Put it in your calculator. And doggone, there's your answer. Okay. That would be very helpful here if you didn't know that the one fifth was there. You know, uh, 1024 to some power equals four. Huh? Well, all you have to do is say log base 1024 of four, put it in your calculator, and you'll get 0 0.2. 0 0.2 is one fifth. But anyway, this is the base. This is the exponent. I meant to do that in blue, but alas. This is the answer argument. Let's just say answer argument. Because answer becomes argument, same first letter. So here, here's where the four goes. Here's where the 1024 goes. And here is where the exponent goes. So the logarithm function will always give you the exponent. That's its job. Now here we are. This is what made me change E to EXP, because you could really get concerned there. This, here you've got E, remember E is a number that's about 2.7. So we have E squared equals T. Huh? Okay, no problem. E is the base. Two is the exponent. And T is the answer or the argument. One or the other. So you write your word log. L-O-G. And then you write the base down here. The exponent here. And the argument here. The only thing is, is that if you put this into the answer box, my math lab will say you're right, but it's the wrong form. I hate it when it tells me that. Okay, well, what's the problem? And the problem is that log base E, okay, the word log base E, is written, so let me say that, is written, L in the natural logarithm. So instead of log base E, you have to write L in. So L in of T equals two. 
the natural logarithm of t equals 2, or most people cut it short, the natural log of t is 2, or quite honestly, most people say the ln of t is 2. I will, I will that one okay. that we never put in, put in our, our answer, answer, we have we to have put the space. space. We have to we put have the, the space, space part, part and put t equals 2. Yeah, ln space t equals 2. Very good. Now over here, we have the same kind of thing. That's the base. That's the exponent. And that's the answer or the argument. So you could, in fact, what I was taught to do was this. You just, you don't get fancy. Log base E exponent argument. Oop, I'm running out of room. OK, and then you change it. You go, oh, OK, log base E is an LN. Even though it's an extra step, it can help you not make a mistake. LN of 2.7183. Equals one. A curved one. It really shouldn't be curved, but that's just me. Any discussion so far? No. OK, let me write this over here, even though this is the combined class. Let me write my code for it, which is correct. So I will know this is for you people. You're making me better and better. OK. Now, again, I mean, this is all the same thing until you get to problem 13, which is the last problem, and that is different. So here we go. Here's an exponential equation. The base is holding up the exponent. So that's the base. And that's the exponent. And that's the argument or the answer. And then you write the word log. Oh, that was big. Okay. Now the base goes down here, R. The exponent goes over there, K, and the argument or the answer goes in here, 144. And that's what it says, except we need those. And I've been, um, when I go through a problem, I've been writing all my answer, my arguments, I've been putting parentheses around them, and my math lab does not count it wrong. So there. Okay. Now, back over here. Now we've got a logarithmic equation, and we're being asked to put it into base exponent argument or answer form. Yeah. 
Okay, so that's the base. This is the exponent. This is the argument. And so we're just going to rearrange them. 5 to the 3 equals 125. And that's true. You could put that in your calculator and it would say 125. All right, now here's a log. There's no base, but there is a base. This is the common logarithm. There are two special logarithms, the natural log and the common log. The common log assumes that you know that the base is 10. So it's just understood to be there, even though we don't know it. I mean, even though we don't see it, we're supposed to know it. This is the log that's on your um, calculator. Okay, so that's the base right there. And this is the exponent. And this is the argument, A-R-G, arg. So we bring that over here to where we have base, exponent, And over here, it really is the answer, but that's where the argument goes. So we're going to have 10 raised to the negative 3 equals 0 0.001. And indeed, that's what they've written here. Now down here, we have an LN. What I do, what I do, is I rewrite this just to make life easy for me. This is log base E of four equals 1.38. Six, three. Now I know this is the base. This is the exponent. Uh uh, it's the argument. This is the exponent. Usually I write it base exponent because they go together. Look at that base and exponent. They just go together. And then I write what's left over here. Okay, now, now that I have isolated what everything is, I know that if I'm going to write this as an exponential equation, I'll have a base at the bottom of the exponent, and that's going to equal my answer or my argument. Answer or argument. I want to keep writing it because I don't want anybody to get messed up. So the base goes there, the exponent goes there, there's the exponent. The argument goes over here in the answer position. Base.
exponent, argument or answer. I just keep writing them both together. Okay. I think it's important that I do all of them, even though I know that it's terribly boring for people to see the same thing over and over again. But the whole idea of muscle memory comes into this. If you do all, all 22, actually, why did I think there are 22? Ah, that's, <coughs> that's what we did. That's what we started yesterday. Um, but all 12 of these, okay? If you just do them, that helps your body get a body memory. Okay. So log base P of V equals negative C. Again, having memorized that the logarithm equation is set up like this, where that is the base that holds up this exponent, and this is the argument or the answer, but it's called an argument here. I come over here where I've got a base on the bottom. I've got an exponent on the upper right. I've got an equal sign and I've got an A word. And you can say argument or you can say answer, doesn't matter. So now I take the P and I put it here. I take the minus Z, negative Z, put it here. Equal sign, put it there and then put the V over here. And that's what I put in the answer box, and that is what's there. But I wanna remind you that when my math lab capitalizes a letter, you have to capitalize the letter too. I don't think, I don't think it would take a small V, it would give you some kind of error message. But maybe that's not. Great. You can let me know. Yeah, you yeah, have to you do have a capital, capital one. one. OK, well, good. Thank you. And then finally, the last of this kind of problem. Look, they switch sides. <clears throat> so don't let that bother you. Log. Base in. A V to the third. Equals X. We can turn it around. Then we go back to what we were doing. Here's a base. Here's the exponent. Here's the argument. And so we're going to switch this to be a little bit. Base, exponent, answer or argument. So now the base goes down here. The exponent goes here. And the argument goes over here. And that's what you put in the answer box in my math lab. Discussion about these. Okay. I think the best way to practice this would be to make your own little words and move them around. Now, I don't, I don't know that that's true, 
but that really is using using manipulation and thinking so that the more of your brain that you use, the easier it is to memorize. I know that for a fact. In fact, something that the books on learning all recommend is that you talk to yourself or you whisper to yourself when you're trying to learn something. Because then you bring in the auditory and the speaking centers of your brain. So if you're talking to yourself and you're thinking and you're hearing yourself and you're moving little pieces of paper around, um, you would be using your whole brain to learn this. And you could make a nice game for your younger brother and sister. They like games when they're younger. Don't you have a younger brother and a younger sister? I have a, I young have a younger sister. Okay, but not a younger brother. No, no. Oh, well, there's always your uncle. Uh -huh. <laughs> My little cousin. Okay, yeah, use it on your little cousin. I knew I had seen a young male running through your house. Yes. <laughs> so that must be who it is. Okay, then. Okay, then. Let us go to this thing. Ugh. What we have here is log base 3 of this argument, 3x plus 16, is less than 0. So we're going to talk about what that means. But the first thing we have to talk about is the domain of the logarithm function. And I have a feeling I'm going to have to add a page. So let's just go ahead and do it. Okay, no, my grid, notebook paper. Just easier to write, don't you think, with notebook paper? Okay, just in case. And now I can move, move it up. All right, now we have to look at the domain of the logarithm function. H M logarithm function. Oh, a rap song is coming to me. Maybe you could continue it something like do I got rhythm? You got a logarithm. I love that. <laughs> you know, put my hat backwards and stuff, you know? <laughs> hey. <laughs> okay. So, the domain is on the x-axis, right? So, we have to use the argument of the function for that because that's where the x and uh, the left and right x movement is when you're doing a transformation, for instance. So you, you don't look at the base at all, you look at the argument of the function, and the argument of the function when, when you've got a logarithm, whatever the argument is, It has to be strictly greater than zero. OK, it's got to be positive, not even zero. But positive. And then we're going to solve this inequality by subtracting 16 from both sides. And 16 minus 16 is 0, so that gets rid of those guys on the left. 
And what this is going to give us is 3x on the left, and over on the right, we're going to have 0 minus 16, which is negative 16. Now, I'm going to divide by 3 and divide by 3 so that we will have solved this inequality for x. And so we're going to have x for this function, x has got to be strictly greater than negative 16 thirds. But it would help to know what negative 16 thirds is. So I already have it in the calculator here. Negative 16 thirds is negative 5.3333333. All of those threes are the fraction one third. So you could say X has to be greater than negative five and one third. Don't put that into my math lab. Put this into my math lab when it's time. But this way, this helps you know what the number really is. So it makes more sense. OK, because this, this cannot be negative. On the inside here, cannot be negative. Never negative. Never. Never. Negative. Now the function as a whole can be, but not what's inside the argument. So now, now that we know, oh, okay, let me graph this. If I, well, wait a minute, I have a better idea. Let me get the grapher. And I put this into, um, into the grapher so I could graph it. And this is what that function looks like. OK. So I'm going to grab this and put it over here. Oh, it's me. Ooh, that's big. Don't need it that big. There. OK. This point right here. Well, first, let me continue this on down. This over here is negative five and a third. Which is negative 16 thirds. So officially we have to think in these terms, but really we're thinking negative five and a third. And what this is asking us, log base 3 of 3x plus 16 less than 0, what this is saying is where, where is log base 3 of 3x plus 16 below the x-axis. That's math language for below the x-axis.
And remember where we say, where we give instructions about where the graph is doing certain things is with values on the X axis. So, now notice it says strictly below. So this is going to be an open circle right here. And this is an asymptote. This is a vertical asymptote here at negative five and one third. Logarithms have vertical asymptotes. Okay, so that actually would be an open circle. And it's only this short little area between the vertical asymptote and the x-intercept that, that is where the graph is below the x-axis. So what we have to do, we already know what this point is we need to find what that point is. And this says it's negative five, but if you were doing this on a test, you wouldn't know. If you were doing it on the homework, you wouldn't know, because I'm sure the numbers will be a little bit different on the homework. So you've got to know how to find the x-intercept. So let's do that. I'm going to take log base three of three X plus 16 and make it equal zero because of the following. Less than zero, which is what we see in, in the problem, means below the X axis. greater than zero means above the x-axis. And equals zero means on the x-axis. or touching the x-axis. In other words, it's an x-intercept, which is what that is. So now we have to use a special rule that we've just done in a whole bunch of homework. This is the base. This is the argument. Oh, well, right base, Barbara. Good grief. That's the base. This is the argument. And this is the exponent. Right now, I can't find what X is. Okay, I need to know what this X is. If you didn't already have the answer, you would have to find out for sure what that X is. But X is trapped right now with 3X plus 16 in the argument of a logarithm function. We have to get it out. The only way to get it out is to turn this into an exponential equation. So I'm going to put this in the form of base raised to an exponent equals an answer or argument. So the base is three. The exponent is zero. And the argument is over on the other side of the equal sign, 
3x plus 16. Now I can solve for x, yay! And any number raised to a zero power is one, but you can put it in your calculator and the calculator will give you the answer one. So one equals three x plus 16. Now we begin the process of solving for x. I'm going to subtract 16 from both sides, minus 16. Over here on the left, one minus 16 is negative 15. Over on the right, 16 minus 16 is zero, so I will have just three x. And to solve for x, I divide both sides by three, so three over three, times x equals negative 15 over 3. And the 3's cancel. And negative 15 divided by 3 is negative 5. So now we know what x is. We know what the x-intercept is. Right here, that is negative 5. So now we can write this short little distance between the vertical asymptote and the, uh, the uh, x-intercept right there because that is where the graph is strictly below, not on, but just below the x-axis. And that will be from negative 16 thirds, which we, we know is really negative five and a third, negative 16 thirds to negative five, that short little distance. And these are parentheses, they're just extended. Okay, so these are actually parentheses. They're the best job a computer can do. And so that's your answer. Let's make this big again, there. So this homework set, I believe, and the introductory notes with it, are going to make doing all of the homework from here on out easier. So we started the arithmetic of logarithms yesterday, and we will continue it tomorrow. Awesome. awesome. Awesome, and that's it for today. So you can hang around if you've got questions or if you want to talk, or you can go ahead and and leave. Are you at work today? I am. I am. Okay, you can like go clean up and have lunch and just <laughs> really relax a little bit until you go back to work. 